When we start to work on straightness with our horse, there's a lot of factors involved we need to pay attention to. I'm going to start working on a straight line. It's very important that I think about my horse between my legs. So really think about your legs being the railroad tracks and your horse must stay directly between your legs. It's very important that we have that spot on our leg where our Achilles tendon and our calf muscle meet underneath the widest part of the barrel and in contact. Because when I'm in forward motion, I can feel his rib cage deviate from my straight line. So if his left rib wants to go, I'm gonna take my left leg and put it in pressure and adjust his body. And then when he's adjusted onto my straight line, I'm going to go back into contact and tell him that that was the correction that I needed to make. Pressure and contact are an integral part of this exercise. It's very important when I make a correction using pressure. Pressure means change something. When he makes the correction I'm asking for, I need to make sure that that aid that's in pressure conversation returns to contact because that's what tells him good job you made the correction that i'm looking for it's very important in this exercise that we think about our bucket our pelvis full of water so this is an exercise in using our seat and keeping our horse straight so what we're going to do is we're going to walk a straight line and we're going to do working walk to a collected walk to a working walk it's actually a precursor exercise to a half halt When I walk my straight line, I need to think about my mapping. So the points I'm setting for my eyes to track are about eight to 10 feet ahead of my horse. Now in a straight line, I actually look through my horse's ears because that helps create the straightness through the neck as well. As he covers up that point, my eyes track up to the next point on my line. So it's very important that I'm one point ahead of him leading with my eyes. On a straight line, I need to ensure that my seat bones are an equal distance on his spine. I need to make sure my shoulders are square and my hips are square. If something is crooked, that will send him off my straight line. With my bucket, I want to tip that water out the back of my bucket. My hands are even. And when I'm on a straight line, I actually pick my hands up a little bit higher. It helps add stability from pole to wither. So in his neck. When I ask him to collect his walk, I want to tip my pelvis even more, pull my belly button to my spine, use some rain aid, and I want to keep him straight and slow that walk down. That's him shifting his weight. And from here, I'll ask him to walk out nice and straight with some energy. When you have the energy that you want in your working walk, all three aids, rain aid, a little bit of pressure, tip your bucket, lift on your heels. When you have rhythm, see how slow you can get them to walk. I'm gonna lift and then a little bit of squeeze on my legs and send him back out. I'm gonna ask him to do it again right away. Rain aid, tip my bucket even more, lift on my heels. Now this time I'm gonna ask him to halt and then walk forward, maintaining frame, maintaining straightness. When they've figured out the transition from working walk to collected walk, and you've added a halt, and you've had some success, I add a rein back. So I'm gonna ask him to collect his walk. Precursor half halt work, and we're gonna halt. Wait for him to be mobile. And ask him to rein back, tip my bucket, lift on my heels. Okay, a little bit of squeeze, transfer that weight back. <laughs>